Hi, my name is Stefano and welcome to ABTV News, where we cover the latest political and world events. Here are the headlines for this week. U.S. urges Bahrain to free rights activist Nabil Rajab. Australia's Prime Minister gives terror warning at ASEAN summit. Greece flash floods leave at least three dead. China uses crowdfunding for Great Wall restoration. Bosnian school students reject ethnic divisions. The U.S. State Department has urged Bahrain to immediately release the prominent human rights activist Nabil Rajab. Mr. Rajab is reported to be facing fresh charges for writing a letter to the New York Times, and he has served several prison sentences since setting up the Bahrain Center for Human Rights in 2002. In his letter published in the New York Times on Sunday, Mr. Rajab said he had been detained, mostly in isolation, in Bahrain since the beginning of the summer. He said Bahrain had some 4,000 political prisoners and the highest prison population per capita in the Middle East. He wrote, this is a country that has subject its people to imprisonment, torture, and even death for daring to desire democracy. Following the article, Bahraini prosecutors filed new charges against an unnamed man whose rights activists say is Mr. Rajab for publishing a column in a foreign newspaper in which he deliberately broadcast news statements and false rumors that undermine the kingdom's prestige and stature. U.S. State Department Mark Toner said in Washington, we call on the government of Bahrain to release him immediately. We have concerns about the state of human rights in general in Bahrain, and we're engaging with the government on all these issues. Mr. Rajab has been a fierce critic of the Bahraini authorities and helped to lead anti-government protests which erupted in March of 2011. Demonstrators took to the streets demanding more democracy and an end to discrimination against the majority Shia Muslim community by the Sunni Muslim royal family. The protests were quelled by security forces after the authorities brought in troops from neighboring Sunni-led Gulf states to restore order. Australia will offer more help to Southeast Asian countries to prevent terror attacks across the region. Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull is set to discuss security with other leaders at the ASEAN summit in Laos. Mr. Turnbull has signaled he would like to expand Australia's counterterrorism arrangements with Indonesia, Malaysia, and other neighboring countries. It comes after the so-called Islamic State threatened lone wolf attacks in Sydney and Melbourne. Mr. Turnbull said that such a threat should be taken seriously after the Islamic State suffered losses on battlefields in Iraq and Syria. He said, as it is rolled back, as its territory is being taken back, it will resort to terrorist activities outside of the Middle East. But we do have to be very alert to the actions of these lone actors, individuals who, for a variety of reasons, may be radicalized. The Australian government is taking measures to prevent foreign fighters who could be recruited from Southeast Asia and Australia, and Mr. Turnbull is arguing for more intelligence sharing. Mr. Turnbull named the 2002 Bali bombings as an example of the danger posed to the region. The attacks killed 202 people, including 88 Australians and 27 Britons. Three people have been found dead and a woman is missing after torrential rain caused flash flooding in Greece. The worst casualties were in and around the southwestern city of Kalamata, where a disabled woman aged 63 and a man of 80 died in their basement homes. A 90-year-old was also found dead. Another woman was missing after abandoning her car in floods in northern Greece. The floods destroyed homes and businesses and swept cars out to sea. Emergency services rescued a Romanian woman and her two children at Egomentisa on the northwest coast. The flooding hit towns and cities from Thialasanokini in the northeast to Sparta in the south. Pictures shared on social media showed vehicles stacked on top of each other in narrow streets in Kalamata, the second most populous city in the southern Peloponnese region. Kalamata Mayor Panagiotis Nikas told Reuters news agency that he had never seen anything like it. The flooding was so severe that cars were washed out to sea on the outskirts of the northern Greek city of Thessaloniki. South of the city at Mihaniona, rescue workers were searching for a woman in her 50s whose car was abandoned after her husband said she had become trapped by rising waters. Heritage officials have launched a crowdfunding campaign to pay for restoration work on the Great Wall of China. More than 16,000 people have donated online since the campaign started at the end of August, raising almost 300,000 yuan or 45,000 U.S. so far. 
It's being run by the China Foundation for Cultural Heritage Conservation, a state-supervised body which says the wall is in serious need of repair, China Radio International reports. Work on the wall began more than 2,000 years ago, but much of what visitors see today was constructed during the Ming Dynasty. The foundation says that more than 6,250 kilometers, or 3,883 miles built during that era, a third has disappeared. It's hoping to raise 11 million yuan, or 1.7 million U.S., by the 1st of December. Dong Yaohui, who's in charge of the fundraising effort, says protecting such a large site is more than the government can do alone. He says by pooling the contribution of every single individual, however small it is, we will be able to form a great wall to protect the great wall. The cash will go towards restoring the Shifeng Coast section, which runs through a reservoir. And according to Mr. Dong, all spending will be made public. Many Chinese social media users are skeptical about chipping in, though. Some are confused about why such an iconic site has to resort to public handouts. They have plenty of money. Why do they need to crowdfund, asks one, while another wonders if the Great Wall's admission fee will be waived for donors. But there's some enthusiasm with one person writing, I'm willing to invest in this. In the future, I can proudly tell my grandchildren that this is our family estate. Secondary school students in a Bosnian town have started the new school year together despite political attempts to separate them along ethnic lines. Education in Bosnia-Herzegovina is not controlled at a national level, and three separate curricula are used in different parts of the country depending on the ethnic makeup of an area – Bosniak, which is Bosnian Muslim, Serb, or Croat. The language of instruction and how subjects such as history and religion are taught differs under each system. In the town of Jajse, students at the two secondary schools currently study in ethnically mixed classes, which follow the Crow curriculum, but the regional assembly wants that to change. In June, it voted to establish a new school where Bosniak students would follow their own curriculum, arguing that they were being discriminated against under the existing setup. Municipal leader Eden Hosan told Oslo Baden JJ Daily in June, our children in Jajce study from textbooks printed in Zagreb and are given diplomas with the Croatian coat of arms in the background. This has met the discrimination and humiliation of Bosniaks for the past 18 years, added that the move was backed by parents. It seems the students themselves didn't agree, though, as many spent their summer protesting against the plans. Bosniak student Admira Kasum told the N1 TV channel during one protest, we do not want divisions. We socialize together and we get along. After we were separated in primary school, it was wonderful when we started secondary school together. We'll do everything not to be divided. And it seems they've been successful. Plans for the new school have been shelved, at least for now. As students returned to school on Monday, the Buka News Portal called them young heroes for their months-long rebellion, but noted that the politicians' plans may simply be on hold as they're in the midst of an election campaign. For the students who fought the decision, there's relief. Bosnian Croat student Ivica Junanovic tells Bosnia-Herzegovina Federation TV, we are together again, and it's great. We see unity in the school. I was so glad when I arrived and I could see what I had been fighting for the whole summer. This is ABTV News, and these have been the headlines for this week. I'm Stefano, and keep watching American Bollywood TV.